The future. Before I go into too much detail, I have to confess that I did cheat once before. It was a stupid, drunken mistake. I could have gotten away with it scot-free, but instead I knew I had to confess in order to be honest with myself and my marriage. The details of that don't really matter to this situation, suffice to say that it was rough for a while, and it took a long time to work through it. It's since been three years, and things have been going extremely well. Until recently, that is. It isn't anything major, just a couple little things here and there. My schedule at work recently changed and lines up with a friend of ours who lives up the road. We've known him and his wife for years and years, we all went to high school together, and we're very close. So, he and I started carpooling to work, it's 45 miles one direction, about an hour long drive. Gas is expensive, and it saved maintenance on both of our cars. Anyway, I think my husband is toying with the idea in his mind that we might be having an affair. It's not the case, I have no intention of hurting my husband like that again, especially not with a very close personal friend. I don't think he's convinced himself of it yet, but it's little things he does like looking at my phone screen if I'm checking a text message. I don't hide it from him because there's nothing to hide, but I find it odd. And one day he made a passing half-joke that my friend and I should stop sleeping with each other. I just laughed it off, but that's what got me thinking. It felt like he was gauging my reaction or something. Thing is I'm not really certain how to handle it. I don't want to just come out and say it in case he really isn't thinking I'm having an affair and that'll make him start thinking it. But if he is, I also don't want him agonizing over it and getting himself worked up. I also don't want him thinking our friend would do something like that either and have it wind up ruining the friendship. For now, I've just been going about business as usual. I just don't know if I should keep doing that and wait for him to say something or what I should do. Honestly, I feel kind of silly even posting this. Just having typed it all out makes me feel a little bit better. I should talk to him about it sooner rather than later. Voicing it and talking about it will probably help put it to rest better than going about daily business as usual. If he is thinking I'm having an affair he's only going to work himself up about it even more. I think the hardest part of this for me is that for a little over a year I've felt that things are good again. Realizing that he might still be scared about a repeat of history hurts more than I thought it would. I bore his fears and accusations and anger after the fact for a while, because I knew he needed to work through it. He needed to let it out and I didn't need to get combative about it, it wouldn't have helped anything. I didn't get my hopes up that it would be an overnight fix, we took things one step at a time. Things got better slowly but surely. It feels strange having this old history crop up again, I almost feel insulted but I know that's irrational. If we let this go without talking about it, things are likely to get worse. Also, for those of you hating on me and telling me I'm not remorseful, you can all go duck yourselves. I'm coming here for a legitimate concern. Telling me I don't deserve a second chance when you don't know the circumstances is spiteful and uncalled for. The fact of the matter is we separated for a while, agreed to see other people while we talked about what we were going to do. We started dating again, and he asked me to come home. It was the happiest day I'd had and I don't even know how long. If you have nothing more constructive to say than I don't deserve him, implying that I'm a horrible untrustworthy person, then don't say anything at all. It's not your call to make. Also, for those implying I did not talk to him about carpooling first, you dead wrong. I did. He seemed fine with it. Comment. Girl, you said that you cheated. Cheaters do not deserve their marriages. End of story. Now you are changing your story. Did you cheat or not? And you are right, I do hate unremorseful cheaters. If you did cheat, you are haughty and unremorseful. My advice is great for a cheater. If you are one, you need to never push the boundaries of your H's trust for the rest of your life, not just three years. If you are not a cheater, quit calling yourself one. Cheaters are vile. If you became one, you have a lifetime of making up to do. If you are not one, quit wasting everyone's time. OP responds. For the sake of definition, it was a one-night stand. Not a friend or anyone my husband knew. Some people consider that to be a cheater. Others would say a cheater is someone who is a repeat offender with multiple partners. So, depending on your definition, I might or might not be a cheater. I slept with a man when I was drunk one night. I felt bad. I told my husband about it because he deserves to know the truth of who he was married to. He decided to take me back, I decided to come back. Now I come looking for advice on a situation that might not even be a situation at all because I don't want a repeat of the past, and people have to demonize me and make me feel worse than I already feel. If that's not remorse I don't know what is. I don't mean to be haughty or sound like some uppity, flighty remorseless, cheating sack of poo. It's an emotional situation for both of us. I'll talk to him about it. For those of you who gave advice without making me feel like crap I thank you. You're right, it's better to air it out than to let sleeping dogs lie in this situation. The separation came after the one night stand, it was the reason for it. We'd been having issues, neither of us were overly communicative, I got drunk and slept with a guy. It pushed us into working out our issues, but we should have done it before it got to that point. Comment. Okay, so, you're a cheater. My advice stands. You might not understand the extent of the destruction you wrought on your husband. My words should not make you feel like crap, your past actions surely should. If you are not truly revolted by what you became, then what are words on an anonymous forum? 
You need a different mindset about how to behave with concerns to your H's well-being. After you cheated, all sorts of regular intersex interactions should have been off the table for you. Now he needs to work through it. You mistakenly use the past tense when it is always present tense. For a while, are you bearing them now? What others are saying here is you don't seem to have a full appreciation of the devastation and it causes. It is life-altering. It truly is not something you get over but rather something that, in time, you learn to live with and bear up under if the WS does everything in their power to make it bearable. There are triggers that can take you back to day one in an instant. Your wife spending time alone with an OM can easily be one of those triggers. Those of us that have been BS know this, you do not appear to. OP responds, I get that my coming here was sort of like walking into the lion's den. I understand most people have been hurt by people like me, so it must be easy to imagine me as being exactly the same as someone who has hurt you in the past. And since I'm a faceless name on the internet it's easy to take your anger out on me. I'll give a status update and answer some of the questions that have come up. I feel you all deserve to know that much. Hopefully I won't seem as monstrous as some have made me feel. I'm not trying to be melodramatic here, I just forget how brutally honest the internet can be at times. I talked to him last night, he barely even remembered making the joke he made. I asked him point-blank if he thought I'd be doing something like what I thought he was afraid of. He laughed and said I was being silly, and of course he didn't think that. I told him I'd been paranoid over it for the past week and he wrapped me up in a big bear hug and told me to chill out. That's one of my major issues I need to work on. I feel like people think I'm a worse person than they actually think I am. I get all in my own head over a non-situation and start thinking the worst. I still feel like a worthless piece of scum over what I did to him, so anything that makes me think of that starts my paranoia and anxiety over it and I start thinking he's going to file for divorce or something. He's fine with the carpooling, he's fine with our friend, and he's fine with me. As far as some of the questions that have been asked, I'm not going to go back and quote them all I'll just answer the ones I remember. Yes, I do text my husband while the other guy is driving. If I'm driving the other guy texts his wife and my husband. Not constantly, just if there's a conversation already going on. If we're making plans to hang out later or on the weekend, or if we think of or say something funny, they'd appreciate. They are involved in our conversations and we do think of them and speak of them. Yes, we do talk about our relationships to each other. We don't get to trash talking or anything ridiculous like that. Mostly we talk about how similar his wife and my husband are, because they really are like the same person. He and I are very similar as well. It's been a long-standing joke between the four of us that this guy and I are the same person and my husband and his wife are the same person. Which is why we work so well as couples, we're like the same couple. We talk about other things too, like work and other people we know, what each of us are thinking about kids and families and where we're standing on that. None of us have kids yet for the record. As far as history goes, I married my husband when I was 18, started dating him when I was 16. This other couple also started dating when they were 15 or 16 and married a few years after I did. This other guy and I were good friends before we ever met the people who later became our spouses, we go way back. Nothing happened back then, we were strictly friends. We lost touch for quite a few years, our lives took us in different directions. I randomly ran into him at a dollar store about six years ago and we got to chatting about work and life and stuff, and I mentioned I was looking for a new job because mine sucked. He helped me get a job where he worked, and eventually my husband got a job there too in another store. We started hanging out with them when they had parties and such, and then eventually just the four of us. Over the past years we've all gotten very close, his wife has expressed that I just might be the best friend she's ever had, and this guy has definitely become the best friend my husband has ever had. We've all changed for the better over being so close, we've all had kind of crappy friends prior to this. I've now been married 10 years, they've been married 7 or 8 years. As far as my infidelity goes yes it was work related. The three of us who worked at the same company all got laid off when the company went under. I got a job with a company that required me to go away for training. My husband and I had been going through a rough period. We were stressed about the job loss and money and a prior business venture that failed. We were disagreeing over what we wanted for a future family and not talking effectively about it. Anytime I tried to bring it up he'd just respond with well it isn't going to happen right now and get all panicky about it. Bonding had dropped off, things just weren't great. While I was away at this training a bunch of us got sloshed, I wound up in this guy's hotel room with him. I know it was stupid, it was the worst thing I've ever done as a human being. When I got home, I sat down and told my husband about it prior to anything else. I felt it would have been wrong to go to bed with him without him knowing. He went through all the stages of grief with seeming lightning speed, he's a little strange like that. Then he went through it again much slower. At first, we discussed the idea of having an open relationship, then the idea of separating, then divorce, then living together but not being together. I forget the order it all went in, it was a whirlwind for both of us. He asked me to move out and I went to stay with my mom. Yes, we told our friends, we told everyone. All of our close friends, my family, his family, everyone. 
To his credit, he kept telling people it was his fault and trying to take the blame. He kept pushing for people not to hate me. I kept pushing for people to hate me. It was a very strange thing for both of us. I expected him to trash talk me, hate me, make me out to be a monster. He didn't do any of that. He was hurt, obviously, and he was angry and upset. But he kept telling people it was his fault too for not paying attention to how upset I was about certain things. Obviously, it's not 100% his fault. Most of the blame lies on me. I should have beaten him over the head and made him talk about things that bothered me before lashing out and sleeping with some guy. But the past is the past. He has showed nothing but the utmost character and self-control through the whole thing, and we've come out the other side. Obviously, the demons will always be there. Sometimes I feel like I have more of them than he does. On the bright side, we've become wiser people for this experience. It'll still come up at times, I suspect it always will. I just need to learn not to get in my own head over it. I need to accept that we're good. Obviously, we're not staying together for the kids since there aren't any, so he must be sticking around because he wants to. Same goes for me. Since this has happened a few of our other friends have had issues with infidelity, and we've been able to talk about it with them candidly and empathize with what they're going through. Lastly, I want to apologize for coming across as a jerk. It was completely irrational to tell people to go F themselves. I get panicky and crazy when I work myself up like this, and it was probably a mistake coming here. I should have just said something to him sooner before I got myself all crazy over it and came here bothering you guys. You all have enough to worry about without some crazy woman ripping open your wounds. I hate to feel I've wasted anyone's time, all I really was looking for was opinions on whether I should let bygones be bygones or to bring it up. I was scared bringing it up would create a situation out of a non-situation, and that turned out to not be the case. The buddy's wife. She knows all the details, I talked with her in depth about it years ago when it first happened. She gave me a tongue lashing, and then she listened to me and empathized. She provided love and support to both of us through the whole thing and expressed that she hoped we'd work it out. If she had an issue with her husband and I carpooling, she'd have spoken up, she's not shy in the least. Over the past three years we've talked in depth about this point, both in reference to ourselves and to other people. We both agree that in every instance of infidelity both parties are to blame. Every situation is unique, and the percentage to which each are to blame will always be different. In our case I'd put about 90% on me and only 10% on him, although he'd probably insist on taking more than that. It was completely inappropriate of me to do what I did as a method of showing him that I wasn't completely happy. On the flip side, he knew I wasn't completely happy and didn't take steps to fix it. So no, it was not 100% my fault. Bring on the lynching if you feel you must, but I do know that my husband and I are on the same page on this one. And that works for us. Should have been more forthcoming with details in my initial post, they just didn't feel as relevant. Yes, I think he does realize that a joke like that hurt more than I should have let it. We do often joke about a hypothetical boyfriend, girlfriend, but it's always in a vague unnamed sort of way. To have him name a specific person like that, he never has in the past, made me feel like he was getting insecure when in reality it was just a light-hearted joke because he knows something like that would be ridiculous. Statements like do you realize what you are, make me feel monstrous, it makes a person feel like less of a person. In one breath you call me sensitive, but then you refer to me as this vague thing, this less than human creature. I already feel like less of a person, and that's part of the problem. I feel less than human, and I'm trying to build myself back up into a person. Making statements like that to someone like myself has the opposite effect that we need. If people continue beating us down and making us out to be less than human, what can one expect of us? Instead of dragging us through the mud some more, why not help those of us who want to step up to do so? I'm not saying that everyone who has committed adultery is exactly like myself. Some people are just continuous offenders who have no intention or desire to change. But for those of us who do, why lump us into the same category as the rest? Help build us up rather than beat us down more. I feel insecure as a human being, and when I go looking for advice and support, I feel like I don't deserve it. Especially when my fears get validated and someone says something like grow up and stop wasting our time. In this instance my fears were completely unfounded, I'm the only person who went there. It feels good knowing that, but it also makes me realize I need to move on from this. Since I'm the only one involved who went there, obviously those around me feel better about me than I do. I need to work on feeling better about me and feel more like the person other people see in me. Husband, he's usually pretty easy to read, I've been with him 12 years after all. My initial thought when he said that joke was haha yeah right, and I should have just gone with that. It's me that got in my own way, I started thinking about it more and more, and I got it all twisted up in my mind and started getting paranoid. So, I've been doing some thinking about the blame issue. Previously I was thinking of the one night stand and the marital problems as the same thing, and that hasn't been entirely true. They're two separate things, and you're right, I do have to take the blame for my decision to get sloshed and well, yeah. Alcohol and infidelity tend to go hand in hand, not always but a lot of the time. Especially in situations where the booze is flowing and your husband is miles away and you're in a hotel with nearly perfect strangers. 
You get the point. I decided a long time ago that I won't put myself in that situation again, even if it means not applying for jobs I know would require away training. I have to own that, even if my husband thinks he's to blame too. As far as the relationship issues that got me so down back then, that's on both of us. I've already cited the issues we were having, and I could feel that big heavy D word floating unspoken between us. Anytime I tried to talk to him about things we'd end up not so much fighting, we never really do that, but having a big disagreement which usually ended in my batting my eyes out and making my face all red and puffy. I'm a highly emotional person, and he really isn't. He just doesn't understand when people get emotional over certain things, and he has a lack of compassion for most other people. I'm not trying to sound like I'm bashing on him, I'm just stating the facts of how he's built emotionally. How he was raised plays a big part in that. His extended family are all estranged, they've all somehow or another screwed over his parents. His father had to read about his own mother's death in the obituaries because his sisters never bothered to call him and tell him. Hence their standpoint of no matter who they are everyone will FCK you. It's really an unhealthy way of looking at the world, and I've been working with him to break him of at least some of this thinking. Just some history in general, when we first got married, we were both just kids. I was 18 and he was 20, and I moved far away from my family to be with him when he was stationed on post in the military. That was the hardest thing I've ever done, move so far away from my family for him. My family is huge and very tight-knit. I have nine aunts and uncles on my father's side, by blood, not counting their spouses, and five on my mom's side. Some of them have passed, most of them are married, and most of them have kids. I have countless cousins, second cousins etc. He could never understand that my decision whether to stay close to them or move out with him was so hard for me since it was so easy for him. His view was that family sucked so why bother? He didn't realize that my agonizing over it was a compliment to him. I held him in as high esteem as my family. I thought it was a compliment. He took it as an insult. It took many many years for him to realize my family aren't terrible and to accept that I'm a family-oriented person. His view toward extended family was only just slightly better than his view on friends. He thought it was pointless to have friends because they'd also screw you over. He was the big kid in school who got picked on for being fat, so he never really had any friends until recently. He has no clue what it is to have a lifelong friend, and that breaks my heart. This one particular girl I used to consider my best friend and her fiancé didn't help matters any either. They were BFF with us and kept hinting that they wanted to get an apartment with us. My husband and I both knew we wanted a place of our own and not to share it. We needed a space that was friend and family free that was just ours. So, we declined. They turned on us and started to withdraw, started blaming us for their issues and so on. The real kicker for me was when my grandmother passed away and she wasn't there for me and essentially told me to duck off. Losing them was kind of my husband's way of saying see, friends are pointless and to never try again. When my other friend, the one I carpool with, helped me get that job years ago and started inviting us to fight nights and gatherings it was like pulling teeth to get him to go. I think most here would agree that withdrawing from the world and being just two people floating around a vast sea with no anchor or destination in sight is not a healthy way to maintain a relationship. Maybe it was wrong of me to force people on him at first, but something had to break him out of his shell and I couldn't do it by myself. Eventually he did, he's realized that there are people out there who will FCK you over, and there are people you can depend on. These friends, the ones I've spoken of before in this thread, were there for my husband in a way he never expected, especially when we separated. They're really more like family than just friends, and I hope that one day if we have kids our kids will call them aunt and uncle. Coming from me, that's a huge compliment. Some would say that your spouse should come above all else, then your family, then your friends, in that strict order. I say that if you raise yourself up to the level of family in my eyes, all is good. Now obviously if some member of my family were to give me an ultimatum and say get rid of your husband or us I'd choose him. Anyone who does something like that doesn't deserve the title of family. But to me, my husband is family, so are my parents, his parents, my grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, second cousin, and certain very close friends. We're all family, and that's the highest compliment one can receive. As far as this mini freakout goes that started this whole post, I've realized it was just silly. Thinking back on all the past conversations I've had with my husband about this friend of ours, I shouldn't have even gone there with it. He very well may be the first actually good friend my husband has had, and that's what that long-winded history was intended to show. I've had good friends, friends that have come and gone and come again, and friends that turned out not to be friends. My husband, until now, has only had non-friends. But the closeness they've been able to develop speaks volumes for how far he's come from the days of everyone will duck you. When I first started carpooling with this guy my husband suggested that I get a gym membership and go with him after work. That should have told me right there that he trusts him and I enough to spend time together alone. Not that we've done so, nobody ever feels like working out after 8 hours of work and 2 hours of driving, but hubby trusts us enough to have made that suggestion. And that feels good. I should have thought of that first before freaking out. As I've stated in another post that's one of my major flaws, getting a negative thought in my head and not being able to let it go. I'm working on that. 
This has helped. I'm not out of the woods yet, but I can see the light. My comment, you guys think OP deserve a divorce or not here. Or she is being selfish. Story 2. Is this emotional infidelity, physical infidelity, or nothing at all? A few years ago, my wife was working at a nursing home as a nurse practitioner. In her role she commonly spoke with a male pharmacist, employed by the same company, but located at a different site. It was common for nurses and staff to call her at home after work, and for her to walk out of the room during the phone conversation, which I thought nothing of. Then, while on a 4th of July celebration, my wife told me about this male pharmacist that worked for the company and how they had become friends. She told me that he was gay and that he hated the lifestyle. She also told me that he said he wished that he could quit the lifestyle and he and her move away and start all over. I told her that I thought this to be inappropriate and I did not like her talking to him. One night, as I was working on a report for her, she received a phone call and went outside. I became curious and went out the back door and around the house to hear her side of the conversation. She was laughing and talking. When she came in, I asked who she was talking to and she again told me the pharmacist. I got upset and said that she should not be talking to him and that it was wrong. She told me that she had rather talk to him than me. After an argument, I finished her report and hoped that this would be the end of it. Then a month or so later I came home from work early to surprise my wife, son and his friend by going to the lake with them, which she had planned. When I got there, she was very glad and asked me to take the kids to the lake as she needed to stop by her work first, then would be there SAP. Disappointed that she would not be there the whole time, I took the kids to the lake and waited for her to arrive. Three hours later she was still not there and the beach closed. We went home, and I called my wife's phone several times, with no answer, then after what seemed like calling 50 times, her phone was answered. A male's voice said hello, then he it was hung up, and additional calls were not answered. I then called the nursing home and was told that no one had seen my wife in the facility that afternoon and that they did not believe her to be there. A few minutes later she called me and said she was on her way home. I asked her where she had been and she said the nursing home, but when I told her that wasn't true, she said she went to the main corporate office work pick up some medication and had got me a gift as well. She denied that a male answered her phone and shared nothing about what she actually did. She left that position a few months later, and I was glad, since I did not want her to continue to be in the environment, and was not sure if, or what went on. I do not know if this male is gay or not, and I have never met him. In her new job she, as far as I knew, had not contact with him. Then one day my son and I was to meet her after work and go to dinner. As she was busy, it was common for her to be late leaving work. As time approached for her to leave, she called me and asked that I take my son on home, because she was much busier than expected, which was a big change from the conversation on the phone 30 minutes prior. A day or two later, I happened to look at the texts on her phone and found that this pharmacist came by where she worked about 10 minutes before she was supposed to leave. I also found that she was supposed to have met him earlier that day, but did not make the meeting, and I assumed that was why he was not coming by at closing time. I do not know what they were meeting about, and I do not know if she commonly meets with him. Needless to say, we had a big argument over this, and in the end, she said that it was all business, that the company, nursing home, was opening a new clinic, and that he was meeting with her to see how to do the drug labels. I found that very strange, why a pharmacist would need to meet with a nurse practitioner on how to do drug labels, since that is in his arena, not hers. After a lengthy argument, we finally moved forward, and I hoped that she would no longer continue this friendship. I also looked at her phone periodically and have found not texts between them, she does not have his name stored, but I did remember the number he texts her from before. She later told me that she was friends with him, because they both disliked the owner of the nursing home company. I told her I though it's strange if they both disliked Hi, that they would be meeting to start a clinic in which the person they both do not like would own. Now, last week, which has been about four months since she met with him at her work, when we were supposed to be going to dinner, I was looking at her phone. We had both just upgraded our phones, and I was merely trying to adjust some settings while she was seeing a patient. She received a new message while I was looking at her phone, which was from the pharmacist. The content of the message came across the screen without me actually having to open it. It read don't waste my $70. Schedule an appointment at European Body Works. When she came back and I gave her back her phone, I told her that I read the message as it came across the screen. I knew it to be his number, which she does not realize that I knew who sent the message. She read the message but made no commit. Two days later I asked her what the message was about. She responded that someone had bought her a gift certificate, then hesitated, and told me it was the pharmacist. She then went on that I had not right to get mad, and that people buy her gift certificates all the time. I bit my lip, and spent much time in prayer, not know what to say or do at this point. Finally, this past Saturday morning I told her that I found this relationship to be totally inappropriate, and that it was inappropriate for him to buy and for her to accept a gift certificate from this man. She told me that he gave it to her for helping him with the labels, and that she gets gift certificates from people often. I told her that yes, she has got gift certificates before, but that she has always told me about them. 
Yet this gift certificate, for a spa, which I feel myself in an intimate type of gift certificate was kept secret from me. I told her that it is wrong, and extremely inappropriate. We did not argue, which was good. But she made no promises that she would not continue to talk with, meet, or text this man. Now, I apologize for the long story, but I am confused, worried, upset sad and hurt. Am I wrong in feeling this? If so, please tell me. If I have a friend, I make sure my wife meets him, and I never have a female close friend. I have never met him, and he might very well be gay, but I am confused. What should I do? Am I wrong for thinking this is an inappropriate friendship? Is this emotional infidelity? Should I ignore it and continue as normal? The way she told me this was that he disliked his life, and that he had sincerely asked her this. She then told me that she responded to him that his idea would never work. But she did not imply to me that it was a joking statement made by him. The biggest concern is the secrecy in what she tells me is nothing more than a friend. She has never shared anything else about him, has not offered to introduce me to him. I feel like I have been laying low and keeping tabs. I know that the only reason I found out about the gift certificate was that the phone was in my hand when it was received. If she had seen it first, the message would have been deleted. Since this was the first text I have seen from his number in a while, I have to assume that she gets them more often, but they are deleted. If she receives more messages, and if she doesn't know that she can delete just the particular message and not the entire conversation, I might be able to confirm this. In other words, if she deletes the conversation then I will know for sure that there are more texts. But if she doesn't delete the conversation, I will confirm that she doesn't continue the conversation, since parts of the conversation can be deleted, leaving only what I have read. Since I also work, and am not near her, I have no other means of knowing what is happening. So, yes, I am laying low, but I am also in the dark. I did ask her how she would feel if I had a female friend that bought me a gift like that, or if I bought another woman a gift certificate to a spa. She laughed and said that I don't have a friend that would buy me a gift certificate. Well, she is correct in that part. I do not have a close relationship with a female outside of my marriage. During that time frame when she was working with the same company our physical life was not great. Recently it has improved, but he just bought her a gift certificate for a spa and she has met him at least once this past couple of months. Our physical life improved after we argued about her meeting him at work. And I just found out about this gift two days ago. She also shared with me two weeks ago that while she was working with the company in which she was communicating with this pharmacist that she had considered leaving me. She did not mention the pharmacist or talk about why she thought about leaving at that time. My comment, what advice you got for OP hash 2. If you think she go too far, subscribe and comment down, and there will be a next lesson very shortly.